Durst the worst. Oh, Durst the worst. Durst is the worst. Durst 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 the worst. All right, so all y'all out there in viewer land are gonna have to help me. Is this a freaking joke site? Is this is this a troll site? Is this a troll site? We are your voice mag. <clears throat> It's talking about volunteerism is colonialism wrapped in the white savior complex. Now let's go through this a little bit for at least 10 or so minutes. Through volunteerism, the white savior complex repackages and presents notions of the primitive African that white people use to further colonialism. This article is by uh, Nyla Aroni. She uh, starts off, so there I was browsing Tinder when I came across something awful and disturbing. Awful and disturbing. This is a very hyperbolic piece. I, I, unless they're joking, I don't know. This could be a complete troll, but I think they're serious. I'd like to immediately establish that I don't take dating apps seriously. I previously joked to close friends that Tinder is akin to an app like Candy Crush, which I'll whip out to instantly ease boredom. I've consumed a fair share of blanditude and massage noir interacting with men on, off the app, so I don't expect them to stray away from their regular programming online. What programming, dude? I mean, again, I think we've been over this. All the programming is your perspective, like the intersectional lefty programming. That's the programming that's pre prevalent in virtually every space in America today. So I don't really understand what, I mean, I, I guess your average leftist thinks that like red pill, like manosphere content is what people get programmed with from an early age, which we all know that that's just not, the truth but uh basically okay she's complaining all right yeah it was a white man who slid in a photo of him volunteering in an orphanage in africa his cartoon-like grin captured how proud he was of a photo that resulted from this opportunity with arms wide open he was generously hugging as many black kids that could fit his embrace appalled so she's appalled that this dude admittedly overcompensates and, you know, because of his white guilt that's been drilled into him from birth, he's volunteering in Africa and virtue signaling on Instagram or Tinder or whatever the fuck, because all that's synced up now. It's one big technocratic nightmare, but she's appalled by this. But I guess lacking all self-awareness that the movement that she more or less supports more or less instilled that in him in the first place, but we'll continue. I know how frequently this happened to me since relocating to Nairobi to the degree where it has repelled me from the app entirely. In the mind of the average dude bro, the puppy pics and gym selfies that must excite white women won't make us melanated ebony queens swoon as much as volunteerism and neo-colonialist expressions of white supremacy will. That's so kooky, dude. Melanated. Like, they view, first of all, they view being melanated as like a religion. It's like a weird like they want to talk neo-colonialist dude like y'all are neo-tribal that's what y'all are neo-tribal that's what i'll call it you know but then lord forbid that white people show even like a shred of tribalism or western people or whatever so th this this right here this is the part where is this like an attempt at humor or are they full-on trolling I should be able to report photos like this and carry on with my swiping, but how does one articulate and subsequently report this when there is nothing in Tinder guidelines to support this claim or prohibit this behavior? Western media rooted in liberal iterations of insidious racism encourages white people to use impoverished black kids as photo backdrops and, it, and deems it entirely appropriate, and therein lies the crux of this epidemic. Okay, so I, I, I sort of understand, yeah, like white people overcompensate and are very cringy. We call them cucks, obviously. You know, like, of course, I mean, white people shouldn't be, like, even remotely engaging in, you know, pro, like, POC advocacy. We should leave that up to POC. Obviously, like, white people should be sticking up for white people, but apparently that's controversial in this day and age. So I'm, I'm just generally confused by the tenor of this. I'm the, I don't know, maybe we'll be able to clarify. Um, yeah, volunteerism. So we already kind of understand what that is. It's, it's just white people trying to virtue signal that they've helped. You know, like Madonna goes to Nairobi slums and 
she Instagrams out a picture, you know, imagine this is where your water comes from. They're working to change this in Africa's largest slum. So they're offended by that, I guess, sort of out of touch Hollywood kind of perspective, which, you know, I guess, I guess that's understandable, but again, they have to, they have to be more realistic about their movement's role in creating that sort of milieu, I think. But, uh, let's see. Talks about people who, that go to Africa and basically end up, like, molesting kids and whatnot. I'm just going to sort of paraphrase most of this. But they're basically, they're, like, this, this, this stretch right here. Unsurprisingly, these fantasies and fictions about Africa have fostered a climate of impunity that has created the conditions for the white supremacy to thrive. I and numerous other continental Africans grew up plagued with headlines of church volunteers and Peace Corps abusing young orphans with unshakable authority. In an attempt to bring these atrocities to light, it is difficult to pick up just one. The face of white terrorism is Matthew Lane Durham. Sounds like Lena Dunham almost. So yeah, a lot, a lot of freaks, or like at least a fringy minority of freaks, go to Africa and like do weird shit. Uh, obviously, we disavow such a thing. That is utter degeneracy and creepiness. Um, I don't understand the conflation of that with Karen or Kyle taking an Instagram or Tinder selfie to impress people, like. That's not, I mean, one is, like, just abusing minors and, like, being, quite frankly, just, like, a sick fuck, um, you know. But here, here's, like, this is one thing that I've noticed amongst these activists where they list off a bunch of anecdotal instances and then call it white supremacy. So they go, white supremacy is serial rapist Hans Rins Egon Dieter. Hans was convicted in the Netherlands, abused. So that's that's white supremacy. White supremacy is Simon Harris, a former head of charity who was convicted of eight counts of indecent. So white supremacy is Rene Bach. So all of that is white supremacy. Is like, I guess, white people committing crimes. Like, if, if there's a white person that commits an egregious crime, that in and of itself is white supremacy. And that is connected with, you know, cringy Karen selfies, wherein they're overcompensating in a fashion, which I agree, they shouldn't be even engaging in that in the first place. But again, I have to, I have to repeat this. They're not acknowledging why white people engage in this behavior in the first place. It's because... They're inundated every day with like you need to be you need to be an ally to white to, to non-white people. You need to, you know, basically sell other white people up the river and like only focus on non-white people. Like that's really the long and short of it. But yeah, I, I don't I don't see the connection. Maybe somebody who's connected with uh We Are Your Voice Mag can clear this up for me and my viewers, but, uh, I'm not, I'm not really getting it. I don't know. Let's, let's check out this last chunk here. So right on cue, the performative nature of white allyship immediately surfaces when any legitimate criticism to challenge volunteerism is challenged by abandonment altogether. We aren't saying that donating to charity should be discouraged. I mean, I, I honestly, I kind of am. <laughs> Maybe, you know what? Maybe Western people should actually only or primarily focus on Western people. Like, there really is no reason for a cringy Karen or cringy Kyle to go concern themselves with volunteerism or, you know, volunteering in Africa. Like, why would we do that except if we're brainwashed by, you know, white guilt complexes and white savior complexes and, you know, anti-white sentiment in the media every day for decades like why else would we do something like that why why else would we signal to other white people that we're doing stuff like that on instagram and tinder so uh we aren't saying that donating to charity should be discouraged uh successful organizations run by locals like no white saviors exemplify that you shouldn't be the one steering the wheel According to No White Savior, the problem arises when you receive praise for simply being in close proximity to black bodies. Dude, that 
imagery. Why do they always do that? They always say black bodies because I th- I think they're trying to invoke like an image of like I don't know like an injured body or a dead body. Like they're trying to invoke more sympathy and more white guilt with this sort of language. Which again, this is this is all kinds of brain scrambling propaganda. It's it's always contradictory. Like every other paragraph, every other sentence. <clears throat> excuse me. No white, uh, no white saviors, well wishers abroad. Sorry, no white saviors encourages well wishers abroad to identify local organizations and support their specific needs. This way, you are entrusting development work to experts who are not only formally trained but who are culturally sensitive. Um, so they're crowdfunding private investigations to get this Renee chick. So yeah, Renee basically went over to Africa and. A, this article alleges that she went over there and with only the instruction of a YouTube video performed like shitty surgeries on like 30 or so people and like fucked them up. Um, so, but that's white supremacy, I guess. I don't know. I don't really see how uh, I'm not making the connection. Um, remember not all heroes wear capes or take photos with black kids while they're at it. And most importantly, the hero in this story certainly isn't white. Oof. These truths struck a nerve. I suggest you embrace the discomfort. Well, I'm embracing it. I'm, I'm challenging it head on. Let's see the author. A little bit about the author of the article. Nyla Aroni, she, her, is an artist and Shapati enthusiast born and based in Nairobi, Kenya. As a recent law graduate from the University of Warwick, she, she is currently on a gap year exploring fun employment to the fullest capacity. Dude, so she, like gets an education, like a posh British education, and like is hanging out, probably drinking $20 Bloody Marys, and that's what fun employment means to me. It's like some bougie shit, man. Everyday plans of using her art to celebrate blackness kind. Jeez. (sighs) Boy, oh boy, oh boy. No, but so, I think, you know, I kind of half agree with this article in a sense, but from a completely different angle, uh, we should get rid of the white savior complex. We should probably stick up for other Western people, other white people. We should probably focus on the, you know, opioid epidemic and, you know, white veterans who are homeless and stuff like that, you know, working class, uh, blue collar whites, they're overburdened with the tax from the tax system and shit like that. I mean, these are real things like jobs, union jobs going by the wayside. We should focus on that sort of stuff. I mean, not, you know, awfuls. That's, I mean, that's essentially what we're looking at is an awful affluent, uh, white female liberal, you know, (laughs) that's what we're looking at. So a little bit less of that, but I don't know. In the meantime, sound off in the comments. Let me know what you think. And, uh, I don't know. Show my PayPal link some love. I'll send out some holographic dirt stickers to anyone who donates a couple bucks. Um, yeah. And also maybe donate a a few bucks and I'll cover like an article or video that you find to be cringe. Um, I don't know. It sounds pretty cool. But, uh, other than that, subscribe, bitch. Subscribe, bitch. There's the worst. The worst. Get out of my face. You are so fucking stupid, man.